Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about conditional statements. Now, conditional statements allow developers to run desired code when certain conditions are met. In a way, conditional statements allow us to form a decision tree within our code. One of the primary ways we do this is to use if-then conditional statements. Now, if we look at the example here, we see that we have a decision tree. Certain conditions are presented, and depending on whether or not those conditions are met is the outcome of a process. This is the concept we will reflect in our code through conditional statements. So the first thing we need to go over are comparison operators. That's what you're looking at here. Now, we're all familiar with the equal sign, but let's go ahead and refresh on some of the others. These operators raise the question of whether or not a relationship between two objects is true or false. For instance, is it true that object A is equal to object B? Or is it true that object A is not equal to object B? You can kind of see where we're going with this, all the way down to the bottom where we have, is object A greater than or equal to object B? Now we're going to review the different types of conditions, the different if-then statements that we can work with. There are several different types, but all of them work with true or false values, which are a Boolean data type. The first one is just a simple if-then statement. This only runs code if a specific condition is met. We then have the if, then, or else. This will run code if a specified condition is met. However, if that condition is not met, there's a default. Basically, run this or else, and that's the code that's ran. So if our condition isn't met, then it'll just run whatever's listed under else. We then have the if, then, or else if. This will run code just like before when specified conditions are met. However, if those conditions are not met, it'll go down the list as they are listed, and it'll check to see if other conditions are met. Whenever the first condition's met, then it'll run the code listed, so it goes in order. We then have nested if-then statements. This is just whenever we have a conditional statement placed within another conditional statement. Just as we would place code within an if-then statement, we can also place another conditional statement. Okay, so here's an example. Here we start off with x equals 0. Now the question asks, if x is greater than 0, then we're going to assign a value of y equal to 1. However, the condition isn't met because x equals 0, which is not greater than 0. Therefore, it returns a false. y returns an empty value. Now if we go down here, we see x equals 1, same condition. However, the condition is met and y is assigned a value of 1. Okay, so here we have the if, then, or else statement. Now here we have x equals 0. The question asks, if x is greater than 0, the answer is no, so it defaults to else. And that means y equals 0. So the else condition is met because there is no condition, and therefore y is assigned a value of 0. OK, here we have the if, then, or else if. And what that means is that we're going to have a few conditions that we're going to kind of go down a checklist. So we start at x equals 2. Is it equal to 0? Nope. So we go to the next condition. Is it equal to 1? Nope. So we go to the next condition. Is it equal to 2? The answer is yes. That statement is true. So we end up with y is assigned a value of 20. Here we have a nested if-then statement. You can almost think of this like a screening process. So here we have x equals 5. The first condition is, is x greater than 0? The answer is true. So we go down to our next question. Is x not equal to 5? Well, x equals 5, therefore that statement is false. Therefore, y is not assigned a value, and this value actually returns empty. However, if we change this to if x equals 5, then this condition would have been met. Okay, so now we're actually going to combine some of our conditional statements. We're going to start off with x equals 5, and the first thing I want you to notice is that we actually have a nested statement here. So if you notice, we have our first condition, then we have a nested series of conditions. Next thing I want you to notice is, is that we actually have an else if statement in there. And then finally, we do have uh, a default value. So the x is equal to 5. Uh, we ask the question, is it greater than 0? The answer is yes. Is it not equal to 5? That comes to false, so we go to else if. Is it less than 3? The answer is false, so then we end up going to here. And our default value is y equals 63. So in the end, y will be assigned a value of 63. And if you notice, it's because we combined all of these conditional statements. OK, so to review, we want to go over our comparison operators. And remember, they ask the question if an object A is equal to, less than, greater than, or not equal to an object B. 
And then we have our different types of conditional statements. We have some like if then only runs code if a specified condition is met. We can also have a if then or else, which says we have a default value whenever our condition is not met. And then we have our if then or else if, which gives us a list of conditions to go through like a checklist. Finally, we have our nested if then, which allows us to place a condition within a condition. Again, you can think of that as screening. Now, one of the most common errors you're going to come across whenever you're working in Visual Basic for applications and you're do working with if then statements is that oftentimes people forget to put the end if statement at the end of it. So if you notice, we have our beginning of our conditional statement right here if, then we go through, and we want to make sure that we always put this end if. So everything that happens, the code we want to run, is contained between if and end if. Okay, just as an example, we're going to go through some conditional statements, but here we have our list of comparison operators, and here we have some arguments. For instance, we just have values assigned 6 and 3. We're just going to run through and see whether or not these comparisons are true or false. So we're going to go through our code. We're going to step through it. First, we're going to assign our variables values. In this case, x equals 6, y equals 3. And the first question asks, are these two values equal? And if you look over here, we're going to have our answer printed out. So obviously they are not equal. And the next question is, are they not equal? And that should come out true. And the question is, is x 6 greater than y 3? The answer to that is obviously true. And then the next one is, is x less than y? Which is going to come out false. And the next question is, is it less than or equal to? Again, that's going to come out false. And then finally, the question asks, is it greater than or equal to? Okay, so the next thing we want to go over are the different conditional statements or the different types of if-then statements, which we have listed here on the sheet. And we're going to have the value y printed out over here. So we're going to start out here, and notice we have our variables declared up here, and then we're going to start assigning them values as we go. Now, here we start off with x equals 0. It comes out false. Now, this is the one we're actually going to print, x equals 1. Is that greater than zero? The answer is yes, so we assign y a value of one. The condition's met, so y is assigned a value of one, and we're gonna print it out over here. Okay, here we have an if then or else statement. We're gonna go ahead and scroll up just a little bit. There we go. And first we start x equals zero. Is it greater than zero? No. So we go to the default value, which is zero, and we print out over here. Here the question is x equals 2, is it greater than 0, No, or is it equal to 0, no, is it equal to 1, no, is it equal to 2, yes, we assign our value over here, here we have a nested, the first condition is, is 5 greater than 0, the answer is true, and the question here is, is it not equal to 5, but to avoid an empty, I'm going to change that, I'm going to say, is it equal to 5, or I can even do one better. I'll say, is it greater than 2? So the condition is true, because 5 is greater than 2. So we're going to have y equals 13. Finally, we have a combination. We have x equals 5. The, the first condition is, is it greater than 0? The answer is true. Is it not equal to 5? That's false. Is it less than 3? That's false. And the default value is going to be 63. Okay, so for our conditional statements exercise, we have a list of colors over here. We have red, purple, yellow, green, blue, gold, and so on. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that the colors red, yellow, and blue are considered primary colors. Part one of this exercise asks that we create a procedure that goes through the list of colors and state whether or not those colors are considered primary based on the conditions of what a primary color is. The second part is to create a procedure that counts the number of primary colors. A hint here is that this works a lot like the count if function. Okay, so hopefully now you have a better understanding of comparison operators and conditional statements and how we use those in our code to create decision trees. So if you found this video useful, please click like and share with others. Thank you.